Hello, hello everyone! I am Alice of KHR Arts and Cloud Orchid Publishing, and today I wanted to talk to y'all about some of my favorite books. So I want to put this out there before we get started that this is purely my opinion and purely books that I personally enjoy and consider my favorites. This does not necessarily mean that they are better than other books or that they are from a literary standpoint better written than other books or anything like that. These are just books that for whatever reason I have had a strong connection Connection with and I really personally enjoy them. Feel free to tell me in the comments what your favorite books are and why I would love to hear from y'all and I'll probably pick some of them up so feel free to share that in the comments and remember it's not a contest. This is purely you love this book because whatever this is not a literary contest of which books are the best written or which books are the classics or anything like that. This is purely just I really like this book. Let's get started. All right, to begin with, one of my all-time favorite books is A Little Princess. Now, this book is a very old book, and it is considered one of the British classics alongside such books as The Secret Garden, Black Beauty, Treasure Island, all the, it's from that sort of time period of books. And why I personally really love this book is I read it first way back when I was in elementary school. I want to say maybe in like third or fourth grade, somewhere around in there. It really resonated with me. And since then, whenever I'm feeling particularly sad or lonely or I'm just really having a tough time, that is my go-to book that I pick up and it's my feel-good book. And a big part of why it resonated with me is that I love the particular story arc. I love that the character starts off with she just lives this absolutely enchanted life. She has like the perfect life. She has everything that she could want and more. She has such a beautiful relationship with her father. She just leads such a wonderful life and then she has to go through these changes. First she has to go to this school that she doesn't really want to go to and she has to be separated from her father which is the closest person she has in her life and that's really hard but she learns to deal with it and she makes all these wonderful friends at the school and she becomes quite the fixture at the school where everybody loves her, everybody thinks that her stories are beautiful and just everybody wants to be her friend and it's just so fantastic. But then once again, change happens where her father dies and she loses everything. She loses her fortune. She loses all of her personal belongings. The teacher finally has this reason to treat her like garbage and she suffers and she suffers hard, y'all. Like, at the end of the book, the gentleman who ends up adopting her tells off the teacher of the school saying she would have starved more comfortably on the streets. Like, it's that bad, y'all. Like, it's, it's just so sad. But then the fact that in the end, because of her kindness and because she never changes who she is at the core of her person, she is rewarded with a dear friend of her father finally finds her and adopts her and she has this beautiful life again. She wants for nothing. But she learned from those horrible experiences of being hungry and being treated poorly that she goes out of her way to make sure that at least people People in her presence never have to feel that way again and she ends up doing a lot of charity work and that's a big part of what I love about that story is that it's this combination of yes she changed as a person for the better but she also didn't change who she was at the core of her person if that makes any sense in that it was a constant in the story that she was always making up these fanciful stories and that they brought her joy and in her darkest days they brought her comfort and that she was always kind that even when she was being treated like garbage she still wanted to treat others with kindness and even when she herself was starving when she saw a little girl on the street who looked hungrier than her she extended the last of her bread to this starving child that that's just the person that she's always been she's always been that kind of person really shown through but then that you know a combination of she got older because she was only I think about like 10 years old or something when she first came to the school
school and then she was about 15 by the end of the book so obviously maturity comes with that aging process but also learning from her experiences and taking with it that she is still going to be this kind person and she's going to do more and go out of her way to be a charitable person and all of that just really resonates with me because I mean I have certainly not lived those kind of hardships that she did but I have lived my own personal types of hardships and that's always stuck with me that even in your darkest days that you should still be true to who you are as a person and not let that darkness warp who you are that you shouldn't let it turn you into a bitter nasty mean angry person and there have been times in my life where I have come close to that where I have come close to becoming bitter and mean and nasty and angry but that story always brings me back that it's like is that who you really want to be do you really want to be that mean old nasty person and the answer is no no I don't so that's why a little princess is one of my favorite books I absolutely love it I did enjoy the movie but I don't like the changes that they made in the movie that are different than storyline in the book there's some glaring things that they chose to do differently with the movie that I don't really agree with but that's a whole other discussion <laughs> The next book on my list for my favorite books is a book that I'm really excited because I recently came to have this book in my possession. The book, I am i apologize if I butcher this name, it's very hard for me to say. The book is called Her Royal Highness King Hatsep Shut, I think. Yes, it's it's this book right here. <laughs> my apologies for butchering it, but yes, this book. This book is awesome, y'all. I read it back when I was in junior high, and part of my adult experience is that I've been trying to track down some of the childhood books that are from my library days where I would check out just enormous amounts of books from the school libraries and just read them voraciously. But I didn't own a lot of those books. A lot of times I, as a child, felt like, well, I already read it and it's at the library and I can check it out whenever I want, so my home library library was very separate from the libraries I would draw from at school. And now as an adult, I'm like, I kind of wish I had those books. So I've been tracking them down and this is one of them. And I'm so glad that I have it in my possession now because it is an out of print book and it is really hard to find, especially hard to find at a reasonable price. Some of the copies that I saw out there were pretty expensive, but basically this story is about an Egyptian princess. And I apologize, I'm going to probably keep butchering her name, Hatshepsut, and she eventually becomes the first female pharaoh of Egypt. And this is real, y'all. This is a historical thing that happened. She was a real person. She was the first female pharaoh of Egypt. This actually happened. This isn't just purely fiction. This is real. But the book itself is a historical fiction because obviously we don't actually know all of her inner thoughts and what exactly her day-to-day -day looked like all the time. So all of that is filled in with fiction. But from the purest standpoint of of history this happened that she was a princess and then she became queen and then she became pharaoh and I love this book because I was one of those kids who definitely went through the childhood phase of being obsessed with ancient Egypt. There are several other ancient Egyptian books that I enjoyed reading, one of them being the complete history of Cleopatra, another one being the Pharaoh's daughter, and there's there's a whole long list, y'all, of all those. I basically read every Egyptian book that was available in my school library, just all of them, because I was one of those kids that was like, this is really fun and cool. And then, you know, of course, surprise as an adult, I became pagan too. Absolutely nobody's surprise. <laughs> this story in particular, I really enjoy because at the reading level that I was at, I was always at a very advanced reading level for my age, but a lot of the books that I really enjoyed were considered on par for my age group. And this was one of them. And it was really hard to find ancient Egyptian historical fiction books that were more geared toward my age group. A lot of them were either for 
much younger kids such as like elementary school we're talking like you know third or fourth grade or they were like straight up history books meant for like adults and researchers and things so first of all being able to find a book that was a little bit more middle ground where it wasn't exactly this like cutesy fun little kid story picture book but it also wasn't this big complicated textbook that it was a well-written story but it had a lot of fun fiction in it was not very easy to find back then there are way more options now which i think is so awesome and i have many historical fiction novels that are set in egypt and they are so fun to read but back then it was way harder to find stuff in that age group in that genre so that's a big part of the reason why this is one of my favorite books is because it was a subject matter that at the time was kind of hard to find and once you found a really good one you just you hung on to it. <laughs> that's a big part of it and it's been a very long time since I actually read the book and I'm really excited to be able to read it again because now it's in my possession and I can read it whenever I want. The next one that I want to talk about is actually a trilogy and it is the Unicorn Trilogy. So it's the Black Unicorn, the Red Unicorn, and the Gold Unicorn. And it took me several years to be able to obtain the entire trilogy because again, these are rare books that are out of print. And I personally love this trilogy because as you're probably noticing, there's a pattern of strong female characters. <laughs> Those are the kind of books I really enjoy, are books with strong female characters. When I say strong female characters, that doesn't mean that they have to be physically strong, or that there's zero romance involved, or they don't have any sort of weaknesses or anything like that. I personally find a lot of that stereotypical thinking to be rather unreasonable. They are fully realized women who have weaknesses, and some of them have romance, and some of them do have softer, more feminine qualities in them, but they are still strong female characters because they are the star of the show in their story, and they have to overcome adversity, sometimes massive adversity, in order to either get the thing that they want, or even on the very basic of just surviving to just get to the next day. So I really enjoy stories that have that type of strong female character in them. And in this trilogy, all three books follow the same female main character, and it's cool to watch her go through it because it is, for all intents and purposes, a fantasy setting with magic and unicorns and fantastical creatures and all of that but she is not a magical person. So magic in this world not only exists, but we also have people who have magical abilities, and her mother is frustrated with her because her mother is a very magical person. Like, she's basically like the stereotypical, like, town witch that everybody goes to because she has very strong magic and can do things for people. But we find out by the end of the first book, The Black Unicorn, that she does have magical abilities, but they're more technical in that she is an engineer. She can build things. She can fix things. But the cool thing is, is that when she builds and fixes things, they never break again. And when she engineers things, they can come to life. And I just love that concept of marrying science with magic in these particular stories without having to sacrifice any of the fantastical, enchanted feeling of these magical worlds, but at the same time saying these two things can coexist together. And just being on that path of self-discovery with the main character of finding out her real purpose, finding out how cool her abilities are and what exactly they can actually do and just realizing her full potential. And then in the following stories, The Red Unicorn and The Gold Unicorn, it's all about her taking those realized abilities and applying them in the world and really helping to make a difference. So I just really love that whole idea of the main character coming to, into their own and being able to use that to then help other people to come into their own or to help solve problems and things like that. And plus, the setting is just so beautiful. Everything in those books are so beautiful described and just the imagery oh it's just amazing y'all I highly recommend the last one that I want to talk about is the seven waters series daughter of the forest son of shadows and child of the prophecy at my school library and this was when I was in high school that I read these books and at the high school library they only had these three books by this author I didn't know there were more books so I thought that was just it 
And then as an adult, I found out that there are more to this series. And then on top of it, this author wrote even more books than that as parts of other series or standalones. And I am just, I am overwhelmed, y'all, by how many books there are by this author. And I am loving it. I have ordered more <laughs> of the books in the Seven Waters series, and I have plans to eventually hopefully we'll see, <laughs> acquire all of the books. Some of them are extremely rare because they're out of print and they are very expensive. Those will definitely be special treasures that I will have to save up for, but that is a big goal of mine. Now, why is it that I love this series so much and why I'm so excited to read other books by this author? The series starts with the book Daughter of the Forest, and this is all based on mythology from Ireland. And this is like from the way back days, like we're talking about the druids and the magic, and this is before Christianity became a thing in Ireland. So that is the setting for these books. And just learning about all of the mythology from ancient Ireland and seeing it through the lens of the character, that it's like the mythology of this is happening right now, not this was so long ago, but this is in today's world, is a really cool setting. But it's also done from a historical standpoint in that they do have characters that are the very beginning of the Christian missionaries that are a part of the story and then also talking about the different political aspects of the warring tribes and then also having to worry about other nations coming in to invade them or being at war with other peoples and things like that and it's just so well written how all of these world factors are put together but then the main focus is also on the main character and her issues and her journey. We begin with the mythology of that the main character, her name is Sorsha, and her father wanted to have the seventh son of the seventh son. Her father is the seventh son in his line, and he wanted to have seven sons because that seventh son is supposed to be the child of the prophecy. And lo and behold, his seventh child is a girl, and his wife dies in childbirth having her. And so we're starting off with that she is the forgotten child. Her father can't look at her because she's not only the death of his beloved wife, but she is the death of his dream. She is the death of this whole thing that he put together politically to be able to achieve all these goals that he had. So it's just a lot of devastation all packed into this poor little child that all she did was exist. And how she is raised by her brothers and how they take care of her and because of that she's given a very unorthodox upbringing in that she is not raised like a proper lady so she's given a lot of freedom that girls at her age and in that time period are normally not given and seeing all of that put together with then as she gets older this becomes a problem because then her father starts to take notice of her and is trying to then mold her into being the proper lady she was supposed to be and uh, hijinks ensue but then also, he has to remarry because he is determined to finally have that seventh son. And it turns out that he marries this deity from mythology, the Lady Unag. And in the story, she is the bad guy. And I don't want to spoil this for anyone because it's such a beautiful story. But basically, really bad things happen. And the main character, Sorsha, is forced to have to fix everything. She's essentially, you know, like the chosen one who has to save the day. And she has to suffer a lot. And I will say that there is a big trigger warning that I have to put on this particular series. That there is essay there is violence, and there is graphic death. Do be advised that those trigger warnings are in these stories, but it's usually obvious when those things are going to happen in the story, and you can usually skip a couple pages ahead to just not have to read it if you don't want to. Just beware of that in those stories, but otherwise they are such great, beautiful stories. And I will say, because this is another big thing for me, for a book to qualify as a favorite book of mine, they all have happy endings. All the books that I have read thus far in the series have happy endings. They do have a bit of a loose ending at the end of each one because it goes into the next book, but it does end on a, like, happily ever after for now sort of vibe. So, you know, everything kind of gets tied together and, you know, the characters are happy and things are good and all that by the end of the book. 
because that's a really important thing for me for the books that I enjoy reading is life is hard and life isn't perfect and you are not guaranteed happy ending in your own story so I personally prefer to read stories that have happy endings. Everything on this list, all those books have a happy ending. But yeah, I just, I love those books so, so much, and I am so excited to read more books in the series and to read more books by that author. And I will put the full list of these books in the description below so that y'all can check them out if you want to. And once again, please do share with me what your favorite books are in the comments. I can't wait to see what y'all write. All right, y'all, I hope y'all like this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're new, subscribe. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.